go get him again. Welcome to the Robes OA channel. I'm your host, Mark. If you're new here and you just subscribed to the channel on this video, please comment below, say hi, and uh, I love interacting with new people on my channel. If you are returning uh, to the channel, you know that even though this is a sampling samples video, it's gonna be more than 10 minutes because it is an amouage sampling sample. So welcome to Sampling Sample Sunday. Love sampling Sundays where I try out new scents. Today's sample is on the brand of amouage and their fragrance called Enclave. Now, you may know when Mr. Chong left Amouage, I left with him. I packed my bags. I'm like, I'm not buying any more Amouage. There's no real reason for it. I just actually kind of stopped checking out the brand. It, it happens. Um, I used to collect Amouage scents like Pokemons. I bought all their men's line. You name it, I have it in Christopher Chong's um, era, we'll say. Now, this is kind of me catching up with sampling samples. I have bought uh, actually a few amouages with the new creative direction, uh, but I did want to sniff through some sampling samples for you from the, some of these amouages. So let's see if this new generation is up to snuff. Um, I hear Enclave, this one right here, is a mint-based one. That should be right up my alley. Now, that that's not new. I think Beach Hut, yeah, Beach Hut. Had some mint in it, uh, but uh, I'm a huge fan of mint and I'm a huge fan of the brand Amouage. So let's see what we get. Now let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. It was released back in 2020. Uh, Concentrations Eau de Parfum. Uh, the nose behind this is Ulster Parfumé Julien Resquinet. Um, you have my attention, first of all, with the nose behind it. Um, you know that I've been actually, I think I've reviewed like three, four Resquinet fragrances in the past couple months. It's just uh, the way it goes, I guess. I'm really interested in a lot of his scents. So it's nice to see an amouage with Julien. Uh, major notes to my nose um, while experiencing Enclave was uh, Spearmint. Um, it is the uh, major factor in this release, personally, um, cinnamon. Uh, the back end of this release is amber, so you're gonna get an ambery presence in the background. And just looking at those notes, very polarizing. Spearmint, cinnamon, and amber. <laughs> wow, I've never seen the, that combo together. So let's see what I get. Today we're going with Lucky Scent samples and uh, you know the little dab dab? Uh, <laughs> love them, not. Uh, but we're gonna finish off my uh, sample of Enclave. I am going to uh, share the wealth here and just kind of spread it a little bit and oh yeah what a gorgeous opening now the opening of Enclave starts off with this really minty spicy concoction I mean it really is quite unique the spearmint itself is the first note that you smell off your skin it's center stage, it takes over the scent, and for a brief moment in this particular release, it is standing alone as your introductory note to Enclave. And what a note it is. And you can feel, like I, I, I'm, you know, I'm saying it's a standalone note right off the bat, and it really isn't. There's a, the, the spices are just coming through just a little bit right now in the background, but it's giving the spearmint its play. Uh, yeah, the spearmint comes and goes to a sweet, sweet minty flavor at some points while wearing this release. And then it goes to a healthy herbal green minty flavor. Uh, the best way to describe a really good mint note, and I love utilizing this in my mint reviews, is I'm always saying that it's like plucking the mint leaf and rubbing the mint leaf with your fingers and then smelling, and it has that ultra realistic mint note. Um, that is what I feel is the best of the best in the mint. It doesn't smell like toothpaste or mouthwash. Um, a lot of people will just put that in their head um, as far as mint goes because that is what their thought process is of mint. Uh, but here it has that ultra realistic mint. Um, here it really is. Um, the spearmint here is mentholated at, at times. Um, it's herbaceous, it's green, it's very crisp, uh, photorealistic, it's ab absolutely beautiful. 
Pretty much what I'm trying to say is an absolutely excellent mint note. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Any fan of minty scents, and I'm looking at you that, you know, if you've been a subscriber of mine for a while, you know I love mint. Roadster by Cartier, one of the best designer mints in the game. Mount Freisch by James Healy. Um, let's not say that this is a mint in the same area of these two, but it's there. But it's only just a small portion of this release. And I want to say that carefully. It's the introduction, but it still sticks around, but it's not the building block like a Mount Freisch or a Roadster. It's not. Um, it really is the introduction of this fragrance release because there's a lot more going on in this release, but it still remains minty and that's that's really interesting now it gives you the impression um, the note of mint gives you an impression of of cooling um, it has a mentholated um, feel sometimes in fragrances the note of mint does this uh, absolutely gorgeously and I, I love wearing it in the summer and spring a really good mint based fragrance because it really just turns the cooling factor up and in Inclov, it, it really does place tricks on you with the coolness because here comes the warmth. And the warmth comes in waves in this release. It really has different layers of warmth coming through. The first section of that is the spices. Now the cardamom comes into play giving its familiar warm, spicy, and sweet facets. I felt like the sweet facets of cardamom plays a little bit with the mint here that may me make people think of chewing gum and stuff like that because it has that little bit of sweetness there. Um, I don't correlate it together in this particular release, um, but it's it's well balanced, I feel. But mostly, what do I get in this as, as far as a, a spice here is the cinnamon. The cinnamon touch is much bolder, bigger. It's the big spice in this particular release. The colors of Enclave start getting into brown and green territory here uh, maybe a little bit of that reddish hue uh, but it really and i love to correlate colors with scents especially niche ones uh, especially at this um you know this particular junction with amouage i can put colors to, to fragrances and this one's definitely green lots of green up top and then it starts getting a little more brown um, and then a little more reddish brown almost like a rusty brown and once you get more into it. Um, so really interesting two facets in the introduction here that you're getting just that mentholated mint herbal take and then the spices come through not too much but cinnamon and cardamom comes into play. Now at this point of the scent, the scent itself personally, and I, I didn't get much testing because it was a lucky scent sample. You only get a couple wearings out of them but the scent itself really takes a little getting used to in the opening I feel after you know, the mint is easy. Um, I, 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 it's not hard for me to get used to it, but um, the spice and mint combo took a little bit of time here. It felt like they didn't play well together in the sandbox. But the more wearings you wear this thing, the more you start loving this transition of, ooh, thin mint, and then, oh, okay, there's some spices here. And the transition here is very, very unique. And this is the beauty of Amouage scents. They are quite unique in build. Um, the cinnamon touch here is much stronger than the cardamom, like I said earlier on. The cinnamon itself has some bite to it. And at times while wearing the scent, and it is actually doing it now, which is uncanny that I'm part of, um, at that part of the review, is the cinnamon itself kind of reminds me of those little red hots um, that you get around Valentine's Day, those little candies. Um, it has that spiciness, the piquant uh, spirit, like a little bit of red there. Um, that cinnamon touch is really actually, it's not big or bold in this release, but it just goes, mm, like it hits you just enough. Now the cinnamon, uh, that touch is, is, is great and it doesn't stay for long to be quite honest, but it still has a little bit of that bite. I love the contrast here in this particular section of this uh, fragrance of the coolness of the mint and the drier notes in here with the spices. At this point of the fragrance, the mint goes way more herbal on my skin to my nose and starts going into a mint cardamom tea with a sprinkle of cinnamon on top. If that's, you know, that's the kind of imagery I'm getting in this section and I'm not done. Like this is not the back end of this release. This is just introduction and a little bit into the heart. Now let's go into the next stage of Enclave and to the next stage is that we're getting more into the heart of it. 
The surprising part is how much the mint continues to push with the spicy components. Um, you get a small pinch of florals here, like a tiny a little bit of florals here um, to give it some cleanliness. Um, jammy rose sort of but really just minimal but it is rose but the major player in this mid is um that comes into the foray is is of course the incense and of course i'm is known for the rose and their incense actually and you know now that the rose and incense and the silver frankincense of amouage that's their bread and butter now i'm not saying that these are major factors in this release hardly to be quite honest but they are implanted into the fragrance of enclave they play minor roles um, especially once the incense gets introduced you almost feel like the incense is going to take over the back end of the release but it doesn't um, at the same time you get hit in the head with a huge and i mean a huge ambery glow um it is just it takes over the scent. Now the ambery glow may remind some people of a cola vibe. Some say Roja Dove's um, Enigma. Um, I'll say sure to that. I, I see bits and pieces, but I wouldn't compare these fragrances together. I'll be honest. Now the scent gets much warmer and the warmth of this, like it was a battle between cool and, and, and warmth, but not anymore. Like this is a darker scent with a really cool opening. Um, that's basically the way I go. This scent gets much warmer, almost forgetting that super thin opening. Like I'm totally forgetting about that mint, how thin this release actually was and how those layers that Amouage does. And of course, kudos to Julian, um, the nose behind this, um, because it's so beautiful, the different layers that you're getting the building blocks in this particular release is, is gorgeous. So now in the deeper dry down, um, surprise, surprise, the spearmint is still kicking. You get that ambery glow, which is now dominant in the scent, which is the transition I think I love the most here. There's this really small window in, in uh, Enclave where the mint is still part of the structure, like a, a good part of it. And the amber is coming through like a storm. The spices start going really mellow, like it's, the amber really takes over and this is the moment where I feel the spearmint is at its peak in quality for me in herbal quality whereas I really does I smell the herbal leaves here and the amber comes in and I've never smelt an ambery mint based fragrance before this and this is where Enclave wins <laughs> it wins it's it's so gorgeous at this part but it's a small window of this particular fragrance because the ambriness almost engulfs everything including the spearmint because it's just hanging on for dear life so there's this really small window where they're really sharing the spotlight and it's absolutely gorgeous so Amber, of course, is then now your major player in the back end of this release. It has incense on, on one side um, to help it out. And also on the other side, it has a leathery labdanum that comes in and it continues to morph the fragrance to a darker release. Um, again, don't get me wrong, the incense and leather, as big of players they are in a lot of fragrances, in here they play very... I don't want to say minor roles, but they play their role well, but it's more of an ambery glow than anything else. There's a little camphorous touch here from a patchouli note. Um, so the patchouli kind of helps this green theme stay alive a little bit with the mint. Um, so that it does, but this backbone of Enclave is much, much darker than what we started out with. And it just brings you onto a journey. So overall, Enclave by Amouage, is, you know, my first sniff of this release, I felt like, oh, this needs more wearings. There's a lot more to peel back, uh, especially when I was testing this thing and I was writing my notes on the first and I was like, ooh, this changed drastically quite quickly. And you're trying to, to catch everything that you're smelling. Um, and it just feels like so much time has passed by through your wearings. I did feel some of the drawbacks that some people online are saying. Um, some of the things is like an ambery, woody backbone, kind of boring. Um, I can see that. 
Uh, the mint itself, I could see people thinking, you know, does this smell like toothpaste or something like gum or something like that because of the sweetness factor. I see those drawbacks, uh, but I also felt some complexity that I don't think I've seen it in reviews before in this particular release um, beyond the overall theme. Like I, I think most people have nailed the overall theme of this release. Uh, basically in a, a minty introduction with some ambery glow in the backbone and that's pretty much end of review. Um, you know, and then of course a little bit of spice here and there, but that's it. What I truly enjoyed was the layers of this composition. It felt like it had stages and it really purposely put things in certain stages, true stages of certain notes getting their shine. Um, I felt like building block A, mint. The spices were lingering, but they weren't strong enough to really engulf the mint. But then stage two, the mint kind of goes down and then the spices come through and then, you know, it continues to go through those true stages. But once the amber showed up, forget stages, it introduced itself and it was game over for any new front runners like the labdanum and the incense and the rose and the patchouli and all these other notes in the back end really were playing second, third, fourth fiddle to this ambery glow. It really didn't give anything else time to shine. Um, there is something, you know, there's a really good incense note in this release hiding somewhere. There's a really good leather note hiding somewhere in this release, but the ambery glow just took it over and maybe even a patchouli, even though it was very thin and faint, um, I did feel it a little bit. So those, those new additions were really small additions to the scent because the ambery glow was just so much. And again, this is a sampling samples. This is two wearings. This is not five, 10 wearings. This is not wearings in different situations. There could be a chance that these little notes that I'm getting out of these two wearings, that could be it for the fragrance, but it could be that if I wear this in the spring or something like that, go outside a little bit, maybe those notes are gonna come out. So just keep that in mind. Now let's get into Seasons Day 9th, versatility and performance. Seasons, um, this is tweener um, written all over it. Uh, fall and spring is what I mean by tweener. It's just one of those middle ground fragrances that uh, really does well in um, basically seasons that will give you both of cool weather and warm weather. Um, you really don't know what you're going to be getting. Um, this thing performs in those kind of seasons. Um, I felt it, you know, it's, it's spring now and I have some cooler weather here and it worked so, so well. I, I don't think it would do really well in super high heat, um, but I feel like a tweener season, like fall and spring, it will do absolutely wonders on your skin. Day or night, Again, it depends on the season, I feel. I feel like it depends if you're gonna go outside or not. Um, I feel like during the day, during a cooler day, it would work well. Um, or a cooler night during the summer or warmer spring month or something like that. Um, I feel like it would be in that uh, general area. Versatility, I feel like this fragrance is fairly average. Um, there's nothing that will stop you from really wearing and go, ooh, maybe I shouldn't be wearing that today. It, it all depends if you like mint, so obviously spices and things like that and ambery glow. Um, those are all up to you. But as far as wearing it and going, uh, maybe not, um, the only thing that would really stop me, like I could wear this dressed up or down, to be quite honest. Um, I don't see this in the high heat. I think that's the only thing that I wouldn't wear it in. And even then, that minty top note, that coolness would do really, really well. Now let's go into performance. Um, performance, when you're looking at scents like this, especially when people are talking about a minty scent, you know, when you're thinking minty scent, you're thinking, oh, okay, performance is not gonna be so good, it's gonna be a really thin scent. And as you can tell from the fragrance review, it's far from that. Uh, performance, the longevity here was 10 to 12 plus hours. I really think that ambery glow really extended the life of this release. I really think that, uh, I think IFF built this one with Julian, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, but um, they probably have that, that compound, that ambery compound that just, just blows the, the doors out. So 10 to 12 plus hours. Projection wasn't too crazy. I'm gonna go above average. It was actually pretty good, um, but it's nothing like beast mode, but really good. You know, the Amouage, uh, 10 plus longevity and good projection remains alive with this release. It surprised me on performance, to be honest. I mean, especially when I heard that it was a minty scent, I was like, oh, okay. But I know Amouage, um, so I know what they are capable of. At the end of the day, Enclave is a fragrance that, uh, 
<laughs> the fragrance and I really had a interesting early journey together. Uh, I started um, enjoying the mint and spice combo and deemed it as unique. And then the ambery backbone came in and from first wearing, I felt the scent wasn't really that great of a scent to be quite honest. However, after spending some time and obviously not a lot of time, but some time with it, um, the mint started me started showing me more of an herbal mint that I really, really like in the mid. And then the ambery glow meeting that mint, you know, that little sweet spot that I was talking about, I think that's what sold me. Uh, it was a really welcomed dry down. I just felt like, ooh, this has a really interesting story to say. I'm um, gonna really like the whole piece of this, this fragrance. There's a certain point, point in the heart where the spices take a backseat to the amber and it makes it more of an ambery fragrance than a spicy fragrance. So a uh, spicy ambery backbone to the spearmint. This is where it hit me the right way. Many purists in the fragrance world are going to say that this is too mainstream of a scent, right? They're stealing a mint opening like an Eros or a designer release. Ambery backbone, just a amber woody generic blah blah blah. God, I, I hate purists. Um, you're, of course you're allowed to have your own opinion on, on scents. Um, but you know, I feel like there is some, some build here and there's some, some good things to really attach yourself to in this release. And I'm one of the first guys to tell you, I didn't like when Christopher Chong left Amuash. There's nothing more for me to want to say bad things about the new creative direction. Um, there is some things that I don't like that they're doing. Um, but it's, you know, it's definitely not on the complexity of some amouages that I know and love that I've seen in the early years, and it may not be on the level of those older scents. But I still find something really interesting with this particular release, and it and it and it's giving me that urge to purchase a bottle to wear more. At the end of the day, there's a double-edged sword uh, when you buy these little Lucky Scent samples. Sometimes they're just enough to have a taste of a really simple fragrance that you don't like, and you're just like, okay, that's enough of that. But there is some times that you're getting only a couple wearings, sometimes only one out of a fragrance. And here I am with my empty vial and still wanting more of the release. And that's basically a telltale sign for me. And that's why I kind of like these Lucky Scent samples is if I'm done the sample and I still want more, it must mean that it should be bottle worthy. And this is where I am with this particular release is there is, I feel, more to discover on this. I don't think I've peeled all the layers. It's easy for me to say mint, spices come in the background, then you have an ambery glow, leather, and some incense, and game over. No, those are things that are like the rose, the patchouli, those, the, the, the notes that are kind of hidden. What are they doing to the release? And the mint itself, it's not as simple as just saying there's a minty up top. Is, is it, you know, is it giving you some sweetness? Does it smell like chewing gum? Uh, is it herbal? Does it smell like mint leaves? Is it, you know, not just a minty release? I mean, that's where this thing, if you're looking at fragrance reviews, especially on YouTube, and you're just looking at thumbnails, it's all mint this, mint that. This is, uh, as much as the mint has a huge presence in this release, this is a darker fragrance. Um, I think that's where this particular release goes. It's really a tweener. It's really a fragrance that has a lot of, a lot of darker tones in the backbone. Anyway, at the end of the day, I am gonna get a bottle of this. I actually really like this one. Um, it's not one of the best, but it is a very solid release and it really gives me that amouage tingle where I'm like, I want more. I want several wearings of this stuff. I really want to peel more layers. So if I had to give it a score, and I always do on sampling samples because you never know. I may never get a bottle. Probably will, but you never know. I'm going to give it a score out of 10. I'm out of 10. This one's going to be a, I think it's going to be a very strong and high 8 out of 10. Um, I don't think it's a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 uh, type of fragrance. I really feel like this is one of those that, especially if you're not a collector of amouages, you may skip this one. Um, but I could see a lot of people that absolutely just gravitate to this release and I, I can see why. So a very, very high 8, possibly a 9 
depending once I get my bottle. Once I peel some more layers out of it, maybe it'll go up to a nine. So eight bottles out of 10. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below, good or bad. You don't have to agree with me. You can say, <laughs> Woody Ambery, boring backbone. I hear ya. Or mints, the mint in here smells like toothpaste or gum or whatever. I hear ya. It, it happens. But I, I love to see those comments. Anyway, as always, a great report fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube.